So I'm scrolling through Twitter, you know, as you do, surfing through the millions of shit posts that people put out every single day. And then eventually I came across this post that claimed Luffy in chapter 1127 to be a fake. Now at first I was skeptical, because as I'm sure you're all aware of, Twitter tends to range from absolute fact to straight up bollocks decided to take a gander at it just in case it's actually something of note. And to my shock, I actually found some logic in what they were claiming. They discussed the mistakes that came from the recent chapter, the inconsistencies and the drawing errors that they managed to find. Now this is something that we have seen from One Piece before, but never something that I've seen on this scale. So of course this piqued my interest and I went to take another look at the chapter for myself. And guess what? Shockingly, Twitter was actually onto something. For you see, throughout the entire chapter, Luffy's design is riddled with errors, with one of the biggest being where his straw hat actually is. Now I was totally shocked when I found this actually to be the case, because how the hell did I not see this in my first read through? Like his signature straw hat, the one that he's actually meant to return to Shanks in this very arc, is currently missing. Now at first I thought, nah, it must be just underneath the Viking helmet, but it isn't. And then I thought, okay, maybe it's on his back, you know, where he normally keeps it when it's not on his head. But as you can clearly see in this panel with the monster trio destroying the cat monster, it isn't. So where the hell is it? Well it actually turns out that this panel is actually a callback to the beginning of Alabasta, where they did the very same attack on this weird looking lizard. But now I'm getting slightly off topic. We'll come back to Alabasta in just a second because in general I think that chapter actually has more hints in it than we actually realise as of right now. So after noticing the missing hat, I took my time and went through with a fine tooth cone on every single panel that this chapter provides, just to see what we may have missed in the first read through. And actually shocking enough, there is quite a bit that we did miss. For you see, Luffy isn't just missing his most beloved possession, his hat. He's also seen here with a sword on his back that then by the end of the chapter switches to a stick. Sanji is drawn with a sword on his back which isn't all that much of an error but is something that shouldn't be there. But now aside from those errors, the biggest error that One Piece potentially has ever had is when Luffy calls out that he's about to use gear 4th on the giant cat, but then only ends up using gear 3rd. Now this is massive because never before has there really been an error in the attack form that Luffy uses. Maybe you could go about finding an error with one of the random characters in their attack, but never would you see one with Luffy. Now one or two of these can be brushed off as just a minor error that the editors may have missed upon release. But all of these coming together in not only one single chapter, but also the first most important chapter of an arc is absolutely insane. And not just any arc, this is the Elbaf arc, an arc Oda's been planning since Little Garden back in 1999. So after all of this, I'm beginning to think something crazy is actually going on here, and something almost intentional. And then I was reminded of something I actually said in my review of this chapter. And that was how weird it actually is that the Straw Hats have met this soon on into Elbaf. Because remember, in the past, them meeting up normally takes 3, 4, even 5 or 6 chapters. Not one. Never one. But now I'd like for us to go back to the Alabasta chapter. Because in that chapter, we can clearly see that this is also the chapter where Luffy gets high as a kite. Luffy is seen hallucinating a lot in this chapter, which makes me think that something like this is going on in Elbaf. An hallucination of some kind. Maybe not something to do with the drinks like they briefly mentioned in this chapter, but maybe something bigger. This could all very well be Loki's divine power. Because as we know from this chapter, someone's going around and passing themselves off to be the great sun god. Most likely someone who's a master of disguise. Someone who potentially has a devil fruit ability to cast illusion on those around them. Someone like Loki. Because who else would gain from any of this? Sure, it could be some random character that we have yet to meet, but I don't really think so. I think one of these straw hats are the real deal. And Loki's keeping them in a playpen like his pet. He's constantly casting illusions on them so that they can't escape. Hell, he could actually be one of them and the other four are all the real ones. But if that was the case, then which one of them is he? Well, I tend to lean towards Luffy because he's the one with all the errors. And I could definitely see an outcome where all the Straw Hats escape going to look for Luffy, but only to eventually run into the fake Sun God. This would also lead to the group finally finding out about Luffy's abilities and how he is the real deal Sun God. But now there's so much that Oda can actually do with this, it's actually insane to even think about and blows my mind as I'm even speaking about it right now. So you all tell me your thoughts on this down below. Do you think Luffy's the fake or is it one of the other ones? Do you think this is all the work of some devil fruit power or just some other ability that we've never seen before? And is the fake going to turn out to be Prince Loki himself? Tell me all that down below in the comments. But now before we end off, I'd like to first touch on some thoughts that I've had on the disappearance of Chopper and how he could very well become a god in this very arc. Now in my last video where I reviewed the chapter in question, I briefly mentioned how this could all tie back to Chopper's flashback. 
It could be where we learn why his nose is actually blue and what happened to hair look before he actually met Chopper. It could also touch on Dr. Kareha and her whole storyline. But now to add to all of that, there is something else that I recently discovered in Norse mythology. And that is that reindeer are kind of worshipped by the Vikings. And it's actually said that Odin himself once was depicted riding an eighth-legged horse, also referred to as a reindeer. Which some suggestions have even depicted as Santa Claus's own reindeer team. Now other Norse mythologies indicate deer as the four stages of hearts. Male, red, deer. They claim that they eat among the branches of the world tree Yggdrasil. Which means if Oda is actually taking any of these inspirations for his own story, then that could very well mean that Chopper is actually currently at Yggdrasil under the control of Odin himself. Odin could very well be keeping Chopper as his pet and riding him around all of Elbaf. Which again, if true, could very well lead to a war between the Straw Hats and the Giants. Now I do also think that once the Giants do see Luffy as the real deal sun god himself, they'll just let Chopper go and they'll bend the knee to Luffy. But I do think there'll be a lot of fights before any of that happens. Like I just can't see Luffy going all out gear 5 straight away against the Giants. It's just not something that usually happens in One Piece. Hell, if we're being honest, Luffy might actually just get stuck in another snake or another wall that stops him from even entering the fight in the first place. But again, once he does escape from whatever situation he is stuck in, he will go all gear 5 in their asses and they will all just bend the knee and follow him. But now again, this is all just up in the air speculation at this point, and it's just something that I recently learned and wanted to share with all of you. I do strongly believe that there is a fake among the Straw Hats and the Chopper is currently under Odin's possession up by Yggdrasil. But until Oda confirms this to be true, I can't exactly say with any degree of certainty. It's just my beliefs at this point in time. So if you have any thoughts on anything that I've said in this video, again, put them in the comments down below. And if you have any tales on Norse mythology that could help us uncover the truth of Elbaf, then tell us all that down below as well. I'm incredibly interested to see what Norse mythology could potentially show us about Oda's story and how it may progress going forward. Like how does Norse mythology depict Shanks' involvement with Loki himself? All of this could already be told to us in the Norse tales, we just gotta find the right ones and then take out the pieces that Oda's gonna use. But now I'm getting lost in the sauce. There is just so much and this arc has me incredibly intrigued, I could talk about it for hours on end. But now I'll just have to force myself to end off the video here. So like I said, tell us everything in the comments, leave a like down below, subscribe for more, and have a great day or night wherever you are. Peace.